Well, good morning everyone and welcome to another work commute in an absolutely horrible December Friday. And uh, yeah, we got Donny on the work commute. Now I've been riding him uh, ever since I fixed him up last Saturday. Today is Friday, so basically six days ago I've been riding him on the daily. And uh, today I want to test out something. He's done about a hundred kilometers and I want to monitor his vitals a little bit. We do have something here. Where is it? It's supposed to be... here it is. In case you were wondering how do I connect to the Scoot's uh, engine management system while I ride, well it's one of those ELM 327's OBD adapters, Bluetooth adapters uh, that you can get off of AliExpress for like a couple of dollars. Two, three, four dollars, something like that. And uh, I plug it in there and I open my Torque app. I have Torque Pro. This costs, I don't know, something like another three dollars, so like six or seven dollars all in all. And uh, I have to wipe my seat, hold on. And uh, yeah, everything together allows me to connect in real time to the scooter's engine. And here we go. Let's go to this screen. Uh, what I have here is RPM, air fuel mixture, voltage, timing advance, and oil temperature because uh, it's actually oil and engine temperature. I wrote oil temperature there so I know it gives me a rough idea of how uh, hot or cold the, the engine oil is. Of course, this scooter being air-cooled doesn't actually have uh, any kind of uh, engine coolant. So, uh, yeah, you only get uh, engine temperature that's usually about the same thing with oil temperature. So, you might see this number here uh, fluctuate a little bit and actually go uh, above 100 degrees because oil is okay to go above 100 degrees. Alright, now that the seat is fairly clean, we are gonna get wet a little bit. But yeah, it is what it is. Let's get on the road. Ah! Damn it. Engine is up to 42 degrees, that's a good oil temperature. Oh, wait, they made it one way around here. I keep forgetting. For a week I have uh, had one way. The street has been made one way and uh, I used to go out the other side, but now I have to go out this side. Ah, on the road with Donny. Man, it's been... Oh, front air pressure 1.8. Yeah, that's a little bit low for my liking, but it's actually in spec for what Sim recommends on the front. Now, the tires will get up to temperature and uh, the pressure will increase a little bit. But yeah, I'm not too worried. I have 1.8 on the front and two atmospheres on the back. Yeah, you want to go the wrong way, bud. Fuck off. People have been using uh, this road as a bypass and uh, yeah, we're currently installing a barrier to stop this thing because um, yeah, this road kind of turned into a small little highway around here and uh, none of us that live in the apartment building like it. So yeah, that pressure is going to go up. I've had Donnie now for one week. He's been on the work commute for one week, done about a hundred kilometers. Everything is running perfectly. Now I am riding him very, very slowly and conservatively because I'm actually going to split the braking period into two. Normally Sim says 500 kilometers for a break-in period, I want to split it. I want to do 300 kilometers very gently, like 250, 300 kilometers very gently, change the oil and uh, do a thousand kilometers, uh, not necessarily very aggressively, but a little bit more aggressively, like take him out on the open road, try to do an hour or two of road tripping, get him up to some higher temperatures, do everything that he's uh, gonna get in life. So this engine gets used to the life of being a long distance scooter and a long distance engine. Because, uh, yeah, I don't keep Donny just in the city as you very well know, regular viewers of the channel know very well uh, where the scooter has been and uh, how many tours it has done. Thankfully, in conditions like this, it's hovering just around freezing point. I'm so glad to be on my Michelin tires. They are so, 
so confidence inspiring and I have no issue leaning into bends they stick to the road as long as there's no ice and there is no ice on the road but yeah I'm really thankful uh, to have them to have Donnie back with his Michelin tires because uh, yeah it was getting on in the winter and the Zantes on its stock CSTs tires were showing their limitations uh, very badly in these temperatures and conditions and it seems we're gonna have a pretty rough winter Usually in November and December the weather is quite nice, but for the past couple of weeks it's been only like this and uh, yeah, it's probably going to be a difficult winter. But yeah, coming back, the engine needs to get used to long distance road tripping and that's why I want to split uh, the braking period into two. Because the braking period doesn't necessarily mean just ride it slowly, no. If you ride it slowly for like 500 kilometers, like say, ride it like this, 37, 40 kilometers an hour, you just ride your scoot slowly. As you can see, my oil temp is hovering about around 66, 67 degrees. It's not getting any warmer. Trust me, when I get up to speed in the summer on the highway, this oil temp goes up to 130, 140 degrees Celsius. So it's not a good thing that I'm riding slowly and I'm not getting the oil he heated up because I am not heat cycling the engine. Uh, during a braking period, the most important thing to do is to heat cycle the engine to show it a little bit of everything it's going to have during its life and not show it, just show it uh, riding slowly. If you ride slowly for like 500 kilometers, then do your oil change and then you say, okay, it's out of the braking period, you take it out on the highway and for three hours straight you keep it at wide open throttle. That engine has never ran at wide open throttle for that long. So even in the braking period, you have to ride it gently, but every now and then you have to go wide open throttle for maybe a couple of minutes, then back off, let it cool down again, then heat it back up, cool down again, because the temperature inside the cylinder for the piston, for the piston rings, for the cylinder walls, for the valves and everything changes dramatically all depending on how you ride. Yes, if you have a liquid-cooled uh, engine, the liquid stays at about 90 degrees. If you have an oil-cooled engine, the oil takes a long time to heat up, especially in temperatures like this. But the inside of uh, the cylinder, like the combustion chamber, the combustion chamber uh, really changes temperature and varies temperature a lot depending on how you ride. So you can't take a, not only a scooter, like a scooter, a motorcycle, a car, anything with an internal combustion engine, you can't rebuild the engine or buy a new one, uh, drive it or ride it along like a grandpa for, I don't know, 500, 1000 kilometers. And then after you've done the first oil change, be like, oh yeah, now it's out of its braking period. Let's rev the nuts off it. You're gonna break the engine. So you kind of have to give it a little bit of everything. Usually in the showroom, what I, what I tell people when they ask me about the braking period, uh, think of it as an athlete warming up. If you ever seen an athlete warming up, you will see that they do slow exercises, then fast exercises, then slow exercises again, then again fast exercises to get their body ready for the effort that they're gonna put down. But you don't see them doing only slow and light exercises. You see them with a combination of both. And that's exactly what you have to do with uh, an internal combustion engine when you have it all brand new and stuff like this. And like I said, I've rebuilt Danny's engine from the ground up completely, inclu including changing a lot of parts that didn't need to be changed, but were wear items. They looked okay, but after having done 48,000 kilometers, I was like, okay, if I'm in here already and I have the parts, change them anyway. So I know for at least the next 40, 50,000 kilometers, I won't have to open this engine up again. For example, my camshaft and the camshaft bearings, everything was good. The camshaft lobes looked great. Uh, the camshaft bearings were nice and quiet. So they even told me, you know, you don't have to change this. It looks absolutely perfect. Yes, but it has 48,000 kilometers on it. Maybe it will hold another 20. And in 20, I have to open it up, open the engine, the head up again, 
to take off the camshaft and change it. Why? No, if I have already opened up my engine, I'm gonna change everything. And I, yes, I did go overboard. Uh, steaming up a little bit in here. In case anyone is curious, the parts cost around uh, 600 euros for everything I put in the engine. Labor, depends on your labor rates, it should be around seven to eight hours of labor to rebuild an engine at the professional shop. So about 600 euros. Okay, of course, I got from Motosfera, my employer, I got a pretty hefty discount. That's why I kind of went overboard. But retail price, it was about 600 euros. But now I have a complete brand new engine from the crankshaft up, except for the, the head case, the case of the head, everything is brand new. New cylinder, new piston, new valves and everything new camshaft new timing chain a lot of brand new parts that are all ready for another life and like i've always said especially with an air-cooled engine like this it is infinitely rebuildable People are scared sometimes, at least here in Romania, people are scared of air-cooled engines. They constantly come in the showroom and like, oh yeah, but in the summer, it's, uh, it's gonna overheat. No, it's not gonna overheat. It's an air-cooled engine. Basically, if it overheats, it just shuts down and then you let it cool off and then uh, it turns back on again because you don't have liquid inside it to boil and damage your head gasket. Because usually when you have a liquid-cooled engine and you boil the cooling liquid, uh, the cooling fluid, you first thing to go and first thing to succumb to the pressure buildup is your head gasket. Now, this thing not having liquid cooling, then I am perfectly safe from that. Usually what happens with an air-cooled engine, you get something called soft seas. Excuse me? running a red light just like that amazing it was already red coming around me running a red light amazing I'm speechless honestly I am speechless Man. So yeah, like I was saying, uh, usually an air-cooled engine, if you overheat it, all you're gonna get is a soft seize where the engine basically gets so heat soaked and the metal expands so much that uh, you lose compression. And basically if you lose enough compression, combustion can happen. Then you let the engine uh, cool down, everything contracts, and it starts up fine just again, compression returns and everything is back in spec. Now, you can't do this a hundred thousand times because uh, every time you soft seize the engine, you do damage, a little, you do a little bit of damage to your piston rings and your valves because uh, those are the, thi the thinnest metals inside the, the combustion chamber. So you do do a little bit of damage to the engine, but it's no cat not catastrophic damage. So you can still ride it on, you let it cool off. You have a couple of, uh, cycle, of these cycles to go before you actually damage the engine. Hmm. All right. Let's go for some alternative measures. Where there's a will, there's a way. You know what they say. I think I can fit through here. Okay, let's see. There we go. I don't know why cars s stand so far away from the middle of, from the side of the road and all get hung up in the middle so I, don't, I can't use the space between the lanes to filter at this intersection. It's always like this. I always have to take evasive maneuvers. And now, nice and slowly, watch out for pedestrians. Yes, I know there's no pedestrian crosswalk and I am a little bit on the other side of the road, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna worry about that right now. But uh, yeah, I have to be wary of pedestrians jaywalking here. All right, 
So yeah, you can soft seize your engine a couple of times when you have an air-cooled engine, uh, but usually you really have to be pushing it for it to soft seize. And uh, at least my Symphony ST, I know from reading the manual and everything, it does have a thermal protection. So once it gets close to actually soft seizing, it will shut down itself until it cools down. Uh, when I did my iron butt, the last two or three hundred kilometers, it was very, it was getting very close to soft seizing because I could feel a significant drop in power. It, at, at one point, it couldn't even go over 80 kilometers an hour anymore. So it was so down on power, it couldn't even go over 80 kilometers an hour. But I got home, uh, I parked it and left it for like a day or two while I relaxed and I uh, <laughs> got back on my feet after a full 24 hour stint. And when I went back to the scoot after I think 36 hours or 48 hours, something like that, when I went back to the scoot to start it up, it fired right up, took him out riding, all of the power was back, no more soft seizing, no more loss in compression, everything was back to normal. Uh, he was easily g getting up to 100 kilometers an hour. That's because the engine cooled off, everything went back into spec, and everything was A-OK -okay after that. Now, like I said, you can't uh, abuse of this feature of an air-cooled engine, but it is there, so you have the peace of mind that the engine is capable of higher temperatures than a, a liquid-cooled engine. Sure, a liquid-cooled engine has usually more compression, makes more power, uh, is more efficient in terms of fuel economy, but an air-cooled engine still gets the job done and I love the simplicity where it, when I'm on the road, I don't have to worry about uh, head gaskets or stuff like that and sometimes these do fail on the road, especially when you're riding long distance with a little engine. It's something less to worry about and that's why one of the reasons I, I went to with the air-cooled engine when I bought Donny three and a half years ago, it's the simplicity. If my head gasket blows but I still have enough compression for the engine to run and to make a little bit of power, I can usually get to my destination without any kind of issue. Be or at least uh, if I am very careful with the engine because when the head gasket blows on this thing but you, it hasn't blown enough so to the point where it loses uh, compression entirely the only caveat apart from low power is going to be oil consumption it's basically going to start drinking oil and uh, if you keep on top with uh, on top of it with continuously adding oil you can ride on for a long distance before it gives up completely and even when it gives up completely you just take off the head put in put on a new head gasket and close the head and you're back on the road. If you have a liquid cooled engine, when the head gasket blows, usually the coolant mixes with the oil, they all both turn into a sludge, you have to flush your oil system, you have to flush your cooling system. Uh, there's a lot, there's a more intricate process uh, to get a liquid cooled engine back on the road after uh, a blown head gasket. With an air cooled engine, just replace the gasket, add some oil and you're done with it, you're back on the road. And that's what I love about it. It's simplicity. And sometimes when you're out on the road, simplicity is what you need. Not necessarily fuel economy. Yes, the 125 liquid cool version of this thing would have been more fuel efficient, would have had a bit of a longer range. Um, but considering how many kilometers I've done with it and now how simple it was to completely rebuild the engine. Yeah, I I like the air-cooled engine and uh, I am a, big, a, a bit of a fan of air-cooled engines, I have to say. They have a little bit of a different noise, uh, a different style. Usually they are quite tor torquey because uh, they're usually bigger in displacement than their liquid-cooled counterparts because they have to be to make the power. There are people on the crosswalk. Yes, drivers in the winter time, like I've said in previous videos, if you come in Bucharest in the winter and you plan to ride, be very, very careful with the drivers because they're all acting weird. Not stopping at red lights, running over pedestrians. They're acting a little bit weird. Every, everyone is in a hurry, especially now with the holiday season coming. Everyone in is, is in a hurry at a stupid level. Look at him, running a red light. 
another one running a red light. Dude, what is this? It's just a 15 or 20 minute work commute for me and I've already seen two people running red lights. Now running a red light is not something all that common here. Usually we don't do it. Oh boy. But yeah, as you can see, I am breaking Donnie in. I've ridden him decently slow. Now on this section, I am going to open him up a, a bit. We are currently turning almost 7,000 RPM. My oil temp is 78 degrees, so it's still not uh, a warm oil temp. Air fuel ratio is 14.12, exactly where this thing likes it. It's perfect air fuel ratio. Timing advance, 38, 39 degrees, just uh, rolling at 70 kilometers an hour. Everything is in spec. And see, now that we're actually going at a little bit of a higher speed, you can see the oil temp creeping up. And that's what I've said about you have to ride it in all kinds of situations. And you have to, in the braking period, you have to show, show the engine all the riding, all the styles of riding that you're going to do. As you can see now, riding a little bit for a prolonged time at uh, speeds of 70, 80 kilometers an hour, my old temperature is 82 and it will continue creeping up. That's why uh, I'm hoping uh, next week I can take him at least run the ring road of Bucharest, that's 100 kilometers so that I can get I can heat cycle him properly at some uh, higher temperatures because currently it's cold outside I am riding slow I don't think this oil has seen 19 90 degrees uh, until now and not even now 84 degrees so yeah I don't think this engine oil has uh, been above 90 degrees and uh, I kind of need to get it up to 120 130 to make sure everything inside it's cured and properly bedded in all the parts are bedded in together before uh, I actually take it on some proper long distance road trips but yeah hope you guys enjoyed this uh, pretty miserable in terms of weather work commute but uh, yeah it's proof once again that I ride in all weathers and I use this I get to work on two wheels no matter the no matter the weather unless uh, there's have snow and ice on the ground but otherwise yes I ride the uh, every time all year round uh, i don't care if it's raining or sunny or how cold it is i just dress better hope you guys enjoyed this uh, little work commute and uh, thank you so much for watching and liking the videos and subscribing and supporting my efforts here and i'll catch you guys in the next one until next time take care out there everyone and ride safe bye